Previously on What You Hana Do Tohoku Train Travel Day 2. We continued our tour of Tohoku from Niigata. We left extremely early and even got to see Japan's coastline at dawn. We saw a few cool places in Sakata and Akita like the Sankyo Warehouses and Senshu Park. But honestly, all I did this day was eat, 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 and eat. On day 3, we make our way to the northernmost prefecture in the main island of Japan, Aomori. Make it snow! Konnichiwa everyone! Welcome to day 3 of Japan train travel going up. We are saying goodbye to Akita and going up to Aomori to the most northern part of Honshu which is the main island of Japan and it's only getting colder and I'm getting even more excited. My name is Hannah and this is What You Hannah Do Japan Train Travel Day 3 going up! What you Hannah do? What you Hannah do when they come for you? Goodbye Akita, you were yummy, uh, lovely. We left a little later compared to the previous two days, but still earlier than most people would travel on the last day of the year. So there was no one on our train and we could do this. We have here an Ekiben or a station bento. Eki for station and ben short for bento. And this is a torimashi bento. Usually Ekibens are served chilled with this special ekiben you pull the string and then it activates some sort of steam pack in the bottom of the bento you wait a couple of minutes and then ta-da hot ekiben Akita is also known for what they call bran chicken, which is actually from a special breed of chicken native to Akita. The hinaijidori meat is popular for its savory and full-bodied flavor. That's the chicken in the bento I'm eating in the video. This ekiben is kind of like a chicken paradise bento because it's got ground chicken, bran chicken, and some sweetened eggs. I've had a couple of ekibens in my life here in Japan and I can tell you that this special hot ekiben is pretty up in that yum yum list. The weather was a little erratic that morning but it was still a nice day. There were times when it would be just white and there were times when the sky would get a bit brighter and I just soaked in the view. It's not something that I've experienced before so I was really having a blast. We wanted to go down a few stops before we left Akita Prefecture, but the snow levels were pretty high and it would have been difficult to get to the places we wanted to go to on foot. So we decided to just enjoy the train ride and the view and make our first stop Hirosaki, which is already in Aomori Prefecture. Hey folks, we just got to Hirosaki Station. It's, if I'm right, minus 8 degrees right now, but not much wind so it's not too bad really excited to be here we actually had to change a lot of our plans we weren't able to stop by two cities because of the weather but hopefully this time we can go around and enjoy the city before going up to the main city of Aomori we are in Aomori prefecture the city of apples <laughs> check out this vending machine only apple juice and they even have like this little chart over here. You've got sweeter, less sweet, sour, and less sour. Ooh, take your pick. <laughs> Hirosaki is on the western side of Aomori Prefecture and it is a castle town filled with history and culture. Hirosaki is popular for its apples, sake, chamisen folk music, and its Neputa festival in August. People say it's arguably the most attractive city in Aomori, though I feel like Aomori is stunning as a whole. It's also home to the Hirosaki Castle, which I will be showing you later. We took a taxi because we just couldn't <laughs> think we've adapted to the snow yet and just walked in this area. So we just got to Metamura Village. Not sure exactly what's here yet, but I'll definitely show you guys. I was just so stoked to be here, I didn't even know what we were doing. 
Anyway, Neputamura or Neputa Village is an ode to Hirosaki's famous festival, the Neputa Matsuri, held around the first week of August every year. They have a Neputa Museum, which we decided to visit first. Entrance fees are 550 yen per person, and they have a couple of shows throughout the day. The show includes a brief history of the Neputa festivals, and as well as an incredible performance by an award-winning shamisen musician. We were not allowed to play the music in the videos, so I hope you guys can visit this museum one day to experience it. The museum displays the floats that they use in their festivals, and these floats are made of paper that has been glued onto a wooden frame. They usually depict different mythical, legendary, or historical figures, and sometimes mythical warriors and beautiful women. As an artist myself, I was just amazed at the craftsmanship and artistry that goes into these floats. The details are amazing, and I just spent a lot of time looking at each individual float. Like, what? Like, how? What? 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 It... It, it was fantastic. The museum not only has the beautiful floats for display, they also have a tea house and a place where you can try some other Japanese crafts like pottery and neputa painting. I really wanted to do it, but we still had other places to go to, so I had to say goodbye. But not before enjoying the Japanese garden full of snow first. And the gift shop. Okay, I told you I would show you Hirosaki Castle, so that's where we went to next. We were not sure whether it would be okay to go to since it was snowing a lot, but we powered through. We really powered through. We are now walking towards Hirosaki Castle. It's snowing, it's light and fluffy, and I've never experienced anything like this in my life, and it's beautiful. <sighs> Even though it's super cold, I'm really enjoying my time. Hopefully the battery doesn't die on me because of how cold it is right now. Ah, it's so pretty! Let's talk a little bit about Hirosaki Castle while we make our way to it. Hirosaki Castle was built by the Tsugaru clan in 1611. It used to be a five-story castle but it burned down in 1627 after being struck by lightning. It was rebuilt in 1810 but due to laws for the military houses at that time, it was not allowed to be rebuilt to its original grandeur. It's still quite wonderful though, and it continues to be a symbol for Hirosaki City. And here it is, the stunning Hirosaki Castle. Though people recommend coming to see Hirosaki Castle during spring because the moat is lined with cherry blossoms making it a hot spot for cherry blossom viewing, I certainly still enjoyed it during winter. <laughs> now back to Hirosaki Station to get warmed up while waiting for a next train. In Aomori, we have to have apple products. This is gonna be the first one that we we'll eat today, which is apple pie. It looks amazing. And I'm mean, pairing it with apple tea. Smells like apples. Mm. Mm. Oh, the apples are really sweet. Oh, this is so good. We are leaving Hirosaki City and going to Aomori City in a few minutes. See you in a bit. There was a lot of snow stuck to the windows, and we could barely see anything, so I took a short nap. Aomori Station wasn't too far away, so soon enough, we got there and got off the train to start exploring again. I just woke up, so please bear with me in the next clip as my brain was still buffering. Just got to Aomori, folks. It was a 40-45 minute train ride from Hirosaki Station. It's currently minus 7 degrees. With a little bit of wind, it's pretty cold. There's nothing much to do right now because it's December 31st, so that's the end of the year, and it's very important to a lot of Japanese people, so everything's closed. Uh, this place. I really wanted to go to this place. This is the Nebuta Museum. In Hirosaki, we were able to go to the Neputa Museum, but, but it's closed because it's December 31st. 
But why was the Nebuta Museum open? You should be open too, Nebuta Museum. <laughs> I also really, really wanted to go to the Aomori Museum of Art, but it's also closed. <laughs> so we're gonna end up going to that place over there called A Factory. So it's like an apple factory, I guess, with lots of apple products and real apples. <laughs> apple store. <laughs> apple store. No, they do not sell any apple products like iMacs or iPhones. They sell real apples. <laughs> oh, this is so pretty. I would consider this mecha oshare, which is like super fashionable. This is so pretty. There's so many products here. I don't know. My wallet's gonna hate me. <laughs> I'm gonna feel great. We've got various products local to Aomori. Oh, that's so adorable. Cute! Beautiful! Wow! <laughs> the prices on these things. Of course, they had a ton of apple products from juices to pies and even cakes. Whoa! It's like bomb kitchen, but it has an apple inside. Mm. Ooh, they even have an apple Kit Kat. Ooh. You guys interested in this? Okay, now before I destroy my wallet, A Factory is actually also a place that makes high quality apple ciders. Here's a tasting machine. Wow. Okay, so there are eight kinds of cider you can taste. Ooh, I wanna try. You can taste the amount you're bought. <laughs> It is all alcohol. We refuse the use of minors. <laughs> Please buy a card at the restaurant. Bam, bought one. These are apple cider bottles and we can try different ones. There are sweet ones, there are dry ones, and there's like a medium one. <laughs> bitter one first? Maybe bitter one first. Refreshing, dry, and rich taste. They use Fuji apple, so Kimoni cider dry. 6%. I want to try that. Let's put the I'm going to choose the 200 yen one. Ooh. I didn't want to bore you with all my commentaries of how sweet or dry or lovely or delicious the ciders were, but we did get to try all of the ones that were available. And out of all of the ones we tried, I really love the Yoshinocho Sweet Cider by A Factory. Mm. This one might be my favorite. Mm. For me, the perfect balance between sweet and sour. A plus. Oh. And he asked me if I had any interesting stories about apples, and this is all I could come up with at the moment. My favorite fruit right now is mikan, like a tangerine. But when I was really young, I used to really love apples. I still do, but back then it was something that I was obsessed with. So I had an apple haircut, my perfume was all apple. Really? Was all apple. Yeah, ask my mom. Apple haircut? What <laughs> yep, is it? It's called apple haircut. I will Iman. put a picture here. Ah, okay. there, that's an apple haircut. <laughs> so there's a place where you can relax, actually get all of the tasting stuff that you want. And you can also buy the bottles of the cider you've tasted. They also have a place, like a diner, where they serve burgers. And in this area is what we previously showed you, which is the omiyage or souvenir area. Beautiful place to go to. I recommend coming here if you are visiting Aomori any time of the year. Oh my gosh, the cutest things! This is right outside the A factory where we just were. Oh, these are adorable! Oh my god, it's a bigger area there with lots of it. Look, it's Chimmy and Tata! RJ here too.
I'm loving the vibe in Aomori. Very, very different from the other prefectures in Tohoku that we've been to. I haven't been to Sendai yet or Iwate, but looking forward to it. But for now, I'm really, really enjoying Aomori. The snow here is incredible. It's light and fluffy and powdery. Wow. After having our fill of apple cider, we decided to go and see Hakodamaru, a humongous ship that had been turned into a museum. The Hakodamaru was a transport ship that carried trains from Honshu, the main island of Japan, to Hakodate in the southern part of Hokkaido Prefecture from 1963 to 1988. Of course, it was closed that day too, so we couldn't see the museum, but it was still pretty amazing from the outside and it was also cool that we were somewhat at the edge of Honshu. Apple juice! <laughs> so this is Toki, which apparently is one of the sweeter ones and less sour ones. Wow. It is what it is. It is sweet. It's really sweet and not sour at all. <sighs> Apple straight from Aomori. I guess that's it for Aomori City for us. There were so many places we really wanted to go to, but like I said, it's December 31st, so a lot of the places we really wanted to go to were closed. But it's okay, this is not the last time we'll be coming to Aomori. Maybe in the future we can come here and just enjoy the place a little bit more. But right now we're going to another large city in Aomori Prefecture, which is Hachinohe. So these are the three largest cities in... Largest? Famous? Cities in Aomori, which are Hirosaki, Aomori City, and Hachinohe. So Hachinohe will be our last stop for today. And then it's gonna be New Year! Since it got dark when we left Aomori, we weren't able to take any clips of the train ride. But it took us around an hour and 45 minutes to get to Hachinohe. Finally in Hachinohe! I think we're going to check in in our hotel first so we can get rid of the suitcase. And then we're gonna get some grub. I'm so hungry now. Still kind of confused what to eat, whether it should be some beijiru or something squid and mackerel because it's what Hachinohe is known for. So that was what we wanted to eat, but once again, since it was the last day of the year, restaurants were either closed or full. We were quite excited to go to Miroku Yokocho which is a backstreet alley that has 26 shops of local food goodness. But oh, we wanted to eat in this place, but it's closed. Oh, there's one that's open. A lot of the stalls were closed and the open ones had no space for us. It was definitely a struggle to find a good place to eat. Lots of great reviews for this place. So I recommend it when it's open. So we couldn't find a restaurant that was open that could accommodate us because it is, like I said, the end of the year. So we ended up going to kind of like a Japanese fast food joint called Nakao. And we just ordered whatever we thought was good. And then we're gonna go to the local convenience store and maybe get some snacks for New Year. I wasn't expecting it to be this big, but cool. <laughs> got miso soup, two pieces of karage or deep fried chicken, and oyakodon, which is chicken simmered in egg and half beef bowl. <laughs> I'm starved, so. Itadakimasu! Miso soup first! It was not bad at all. It even had namiko, a slimy mushroom that I love eating, so that was a nice touch. Next, I had the karage, and it was... Mm, just okay. It's the average karage I can get at local supermarkets. And then I tried the oyakodon. It was actually really good. I was pleasantly surprised. The beef gyudon was quite yummy too. Honestly, I wasn't expecting much from the meal. And although it wasn't, you know, New Year feast material, it was filling and delicious. Ta-da! 
Ooh, now that we're done with dinner, we're actually pretty full from that. It's a pretty big serving for a fast food restaurant here in Japan, but I'm also craving for some junk. We're gonna grab some junk, go up, and celebrate the new year up there. Mm hmm. What to choose? I don't know. But I definitely want chips or something. Dried squid, anyone? Should I get some ice cream? Ice cream's always good. Mm. Got our snacks. Particularly excited about this one. It's a pistachio and choco cookie ice cream thing. <laughs> I don't know, got it because of the weird packaging, but say about this. We've got all of our snacks, we're just gonna go up and pick out. So thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, click like down below. And if you want to see more content about Japan, you know what to do. So until next time, Jane, and see you in the next video. See you in day four. <laughs> On day four, watch us struggle to find anything open because it's the first day of the year, and then eventually find a heavenly restaurant where I have the best cow tongue I've ever had in my life. See you!